What is going on YouTube? Fetz here and I have got an ultimate attack chopper guide for you. Uh, I'm going to go over some various aspects of finding the attack chopper that will help you take your game to the next level. Uh, I'm assuming if you're watching this that you have the basic flight controls down. We're not talking about that. We're talking about if you want to become a little bit better pilot. Uh, some of the things you should keep in mind. We're going to go through some different aspects of flying the attack helicopter. We're going to start out here talking about how we want to attack tanks and move into how we want to fight uh, enemy attack helicopters and and we'll go from there. Um, I am on the Xbox, I play on the console, so this will mostly uh, be focused on console gameplay. Um, so first off I want to talk about one of the principles using cover. You can see how I approach this enemy tank here and I keep these pipes in between me and that tank uh, just to take away some of the area he would be able to use to hit me with this turret. Um, I'm not as worried about a guided rocket because I can ECM that. I'm always running the ECM. Um, but in, when using that uh, cover, you're also worried about the angle of attack on the tank that you're approaching with. Basically, tanks have a limited elevation that they can raise their turret up, and you want to be above that at all times. Uh, to avoid um, the, in the what is now a one-hit kill from the turret. So if you can get above that angle of elevation that the tank has for their turret and come in above that outside of their range, uh, they have no chance. There's literally nothing they can do. Their gunner can put fire on you, but uh, assuming you have decent aim, you're going to be able to take out a tank before he can do much damage to you. And then one of the other things we want to look at is flanking tanks coming in at them, um, surprising them, getting good hits on them like this before they can even turn their turret towards you. And this is one of the reasons I mentioned that I'm playing on console. We have a, a limitation on console where tank turrets are pretty slow to rotate. I watch a lot of PC footage and I realize that they can rotate turrets a little faster so some of this stuff might not apply quite the same. Um, but the fourth thing I want to talk about with tanks is controlling the engagement. So you saw me hit that tank, and instead of hovering around Charlie, I take off and head back to the middle of the map and then re-engage the second tank. Um, and I apply a lot of the same principles. As I come over him, I'm a little low, so I raise up um, an altitude and then come back at him at an angle that keeps me above his turret. Um, right there, I slip a little bit low, and that was just a mistake. Um, but in general, you know, I'm trying to stay above where I think he can elevate his turret to hit me. And you'll see that applied over and over, you know, just taking the right angle to approach um, a tank and still get shots on him without getting um, too low. Uh, you saw me take out a tank that was hiding in a building there. This is another example of using your environment. A little bit of a slip going through there, but I like this route where I come under that pipe and I come up using the building and terrain as cover there and then roll over to my right on the tanks that are approaching out of their spawn. Um, I do that um, a lot now and that's a really successful route and that's an example of just using terrain, using cover to approach an enemy tank. Um, here is a good example where I come in and I, I don't expect them to be there, but I instantly gain altitude to get out of their range. I hit them, and then I control the engagement. I fall back, and I raise up again to stay outside of their turret range, and I come in for another hit on these guys and take them out. You know, the whole time I'm aware of um, not getting too low, not getting in front of them. And uh, using... Uh, cover here you see the screen on the right that tank shell actually hits the building um, because I had drifted around behind that building with the intention of using it to block a tank round and it were and it actually happened you know it was one of those times where hey I planned that and this is what happened you know I used that building here's another example of this route where I execute a little better come in under the cover pop up and this guy doesn't have a chance um, you know tank rules apply to choppers as far as armor so they're weaker in, in the rear than they are in the front or sides and that applies to your chopper just the same as it does an RPG uh, so getting those front or side hits is still um, a benefit you know here's another one using terrain map to terrain come in on the side get a good hit on him and he's dead you know if you if you use those flanks you hit the tank in the right spot that's what's gonna happen 
Uh, so moving on, um, let's talk about fighting enemy choppers. This first one here, uh, this is, uh, I call this up and over. He got me out of position. He was above me coming down. I use his momentum against him. I go at him and under him and let him fly over me. And then I elevate up as he's coming down. And then I'm in the position of power where you want to be when you're fighting a chopper is above them. You know, so now we get into this little bit of prolonged dogfight here. We end up winning this, and that's just a matter of patience. That's a matter of not firing both my rockets when I shouldn't. You know, fire one, wait, fire another, wait. And then I take him out, and I instantly get back down to the ground. That's where I like to be in a chopper. I get hit by RPGs, I get hit by tanks, but, um, you know, I still live a lot longer down at the ground. Um, here's an example of, he was a little closer, Ian. He was closing the gap. Um, I had position on above him, so I actually fired both rockets because typically in that situation, unless he gets his flares or ECM out right away, both rockets are going to hit. Here's an example. I fire one and wait, and I'm waiting for the flare, waiting for the flare, no flare, second one's away instantly, and that's a disable, and we follow up with the kill. Um, so these are things you got to think about, you know, how to use your rockets, um, how to be efficient with your rockets and not waste them. Here I'm using this crane as cover. I was out of position uh, again. Um, and then I wait for him to come in. It's kind of like the up and over. Um, and he, he goes by me and I switch to rocket pods. Um, I don't, I'm not running guided. I've just learned to get pretty accurate with them. Because in close like that, it takes so long for your um, air to air missiles to lock on. That if you can get good with those rockets, then you, uh, you can win that fight every time. There you saw me approach below radar. If you see uh, your altimeter is red, that means you're below radar. you got to stay there for a few seconds for it to engage. And when that happens, you, you go off radar. So he doesn't see me on radar at all. And that gives me an advantage of being able to sneak up on him. And I use that quite a bit. That's one of the reasons I like to stay low. Um, here's another example of using rockets up close. You know, I w by the time I could have locked on with my AA missile, he would have been by me. Go rockets, put some damage on them, which causes them to go down, and we finish them off. Uh, and then we get down to the ground and hide. Here's a more classic approach to a chopper dogfight. You know, I always run the laser designator for this reason. So I fire one, he flares it, it takes off. I fire two, and uh, I think the gunner flares it. And Corrupt's got the air-to-ground missile, which can lock onto my laser designation. And he drops it. That's always a one-hit kill as well. Uh, so that's my preferred setup, when I'm, especially when I'm uh, dogfighting choppers, is that laser designator. Um, Here's a clip where I, I was out of position, and uh, I take off and run. Um, I, don't be afraid to run. Uh, so I put some distance between me and him, and it kind of backfires because now I'm out of range. I can't do anything. I'm low, so I'm trying to angle up to fight him, which is causing me to lose altitude, um, and it just puts me in another bad position. We do get lucky. We win this dogfight. Um, we drop him here, but it leaves us really weak. We're at 26, 19, 14% health. Um, and here's where getting to the ground quick is really important. This takes some practice. I find that if I flip the chopper around and land backwards, I can put it down like in one spot where I'm near it to repair. So that's a good tip. Flip that chopper around just before you jump out. And uh, you'll have a lot more success with that. Here's another example. One thing I always tell people is don't cap flags and attack helicopters. I used to try it, you know, I have the control to do it, but this always happens to me. This guy's down here near the ground just hovering in one spot instead of being on the move. And he's an easy target for us. Uh, so that's a general rule of mine that I, I try to stick to is I never cap flags in the attack helicopter. Um, so let's move on and talk about attacking infantry now. Um, this is a little bit different. You rely on your gunner a lot more when you're attacking infantry. You can use your rocket pods to soften them up. You can even get kills with your rocket pods. 
but your gunner is designed for this. You know, let him do the work. Keep your nose up, um, and let him shoot down on the target so you can stay level and keep moving. Um, you know, this is that's the key to attacking infantry um, in general. You know, just non-specific generic infantry is just to rely on your gunner. Um, but one of the things the attack chopper excels at is taking out entrenched infantry. Um, hard, hard targets, infantry behind walls, infantry on rooftops. So you're going to prioritize that in the chopper. You know, these guys hiding up here, these snipers that have the beacons and, and the towers and the cranes and the buildings. Uh, that's, a, that's a pain in the butt when you're infantry. You know, you see those guys and you just... Uh, you know, it gets frustrating getting taken out by them. So having a good attack chopper pilot that can go get them for you is uh, is really nice. So whenever I'm in the attack chopper, if I see a sniper in a crane, you know, assuming I, I'm not worried about the enemy attack helicopter or jets or a tank, then that becomes a pri priority target for me. Obviously, armor is more of a priority for me. And uh, enemy choppers are my number one priority. But, um, you know, guy running across the road is not as big a threat as this guy camping out up here with the spawn beacon. And um, so that's, that's kind of how I look at that. Yeah. Rooftops are another big thing. Uh, this is a map that illustrates it well. Uh, you know, I'm in here flying around these towers, and uh, we get a really nice spot. We spin around here and look at this rooftop. And it just lights up like Christmas lights, so you know we get to work on that. I think we get a little assist from Richard Cook and the Jed here, um, but that's another one where if your infantry has to try to climb a ladder to that rooftop, um, they're sitting duck. You know I can't. You know I've climbed ladders and gotten taken out right away, and and then it's you know they know you're coming and and you're you're even in a worse position to come back and try to get the kill. Um, but they can guard B pretty effectively, they can cap from the rooftop, so you're playing the objective, you're helping your team out quite a bit by going after those rooftop targets there. Another one here on the roof uh, that I kind of sneak up on, so. Um, eh, this is another tip. Um, this is a really good clip where I get a couple of passes on these guys, and I maybe I should be letting my gunner do a little more work than I am. Uh, but regardless, you know, we're trying to hit these couple of guys sprinting towards um, the MCOM there at uh, Delta. And that's the second pass where we've gotten hit markers and not been able to kill these guys. Uh, but rather than ignoring them and looking for an easier target, I stick with it. And I pick up a kill, and Krupp picks up a second kill in the gunner seat. Um, so, you know, that's important. It's easy to just let those guys go. Um, here's an example on Squad Rush. This is, one, uh, I think, one of the only, uh, or Rush. This is one of the only Rush uh, clips in this, and mostly Conquest. Uh, but this is an example of, you know, just playing the objective in the attack chopper here. Um, we can sit here and hover, um, you know, we stand on the move, but in general hover around these MCOMs. We can blow up new entrances for our infantry. Uh, to go through walls, we can take explosives off the MCOM, such as Claymores and C4. Once they arm the MCOM, we can light it up and keep it safe. We can shoot um, the enemy team as they spawn. Uh, so there's a lot of advantages to playing the objective there. Um, one of the other things I want to talk about, which is less attack oriented and more just about how to survive um, in the attack helicopter, because you can't get kills if you're standing in your spawn waiting for the chop. Um, so a couple clips here. Uh, where I'm, I'm taking I'm mostly taking fire from jets and this is another example of landing backwards here and as I come down backwards and I can jump out and the choppers just sit and still waiting for me rather than drifting along the ground <clears throat> and in this case the enemy attack helicopter doesn't see us and we return to the fight behind him in an awesome position we just get handed a gift basically uh, but we're able to save our helicopter take out their attack helicopter and just do a lot of damage in one brief moment for our team. There. Here's an, uh, another example of how I, I, a lot of times I just run. You know, I'm out of position and I know it. That's a key, knowing when you're out of position and making a run um, for a better position. So in this case, I was trying to get to this crane. I pull another up and over. He actually stays with me pretty well. But the thing he fails to do is go to guns effectively or go to 
<clears throat> rockets effectively. Uh, and I do it better than him, and I win that fight. Um, you know, here's a good clip with a jet. Um, I've gotten um, really good or, or get a lot of enjoyment out of this lately, getting jets to come at me and, and, and fail, um, trying to hit me when I stay. Um, kind of mess up there. I, I lose control of my chopper for a minute, um, and here I regain control. And I'm staying as tight as I can to these oil tanks, knowing that the, the if the jets want me, they're going to have a tough time getting on target. And look at what these guys are doing. Watch on screen. This is a C4 Jihad jet, and he detonates and misses. Um, so he's dead. Suicide for him. <laughs> and that's what he deserves. Here's another example. I go under the pipes. I use the terrain. Jet crashes into him coming after me. Um, so that's something I've been doing a lot lately, and I really, you know, that's great. You kill a jet and you survive. So learn to use your terrain for that. Um, here's a tip. I've done this in a previous video, and I'm going to share it again because it still works. I'm flying low trying to get my blueberry gunner to see that guy, and I, I hit the pole. And if you notice what happens is I bailed out instantly, and I knew I was going to hit that pole. And I bailed out, and it shuts off your rotor. Your chopper just falls to the ground and lives and and I was able to get back in because I was so low in that situation sometimes you die that's why I said that <laughs> uh, so the last thing I want to talk about is the fighting jets and to be honest this is really short because I don't fight jets in the attack helicopter I know some people do and some people are really good at it and I'm not saying I can't but if you watch this clip I mean this is such a waste of time where I could be down at the ground killing people, killing armor, and helping my team out. Um, one tip I can give you is to duck jets, duck under them, because they can't nose over very well. Um, so, you know, if you see one coming out, you try to get under it. Other than that, I just avoid the jet fights. If I ignore them, a lot of times they even ignore me. So, um, that's it, guys. Um, this is just the first, and... Uh, uh, chopper guide I want to bring out and share some tips with you guys to help you elevate your game. Leave me some feedback and uh, let me know uh, things you'd like to see in, in future videos of this nature. So anyways, for 11 Bravo, this is Fed.